Mario and Goku are two mascots of two of the biggest forms of media of all time. Anyone who hasn't even watched anime or played video games will likely have been able to point out these two characters due to their iconicness. So who wins in a fight to the death? Well, if you asked me this about a year ago when I made my Mario vs Sonic video, I probably would have said that Mario wins really easily to the point where I even made this thumbnail. Yes, this video has been that long in the making. Now, as funny as this thumbnail is, after giving it some thought, it's not completely fair just to leave it up to a Mario wins GG, as this debate is actually quite complex and in depth, so I decided to give a bit more thought and, you know, put in a lot more effort for this matchup, for lack of a better term. So, if you're going to enjoy this video, then make sure to like, subscribe, comment below your thoughts on it, and let's get into Mario vs Goku. I'll start with Goku scaling first. For starters, he is bare minimum at the lowest you can place him at as multiple times universal and can scale up to multiversal. This is due to him fighting Beerus in his Super Saiyan God form, which he retains uh, to his power into his base, meaning that he should scale to his own God form within his base state. This is important as God Goku could clash fists with Beerus and doing so was going to destroy the entire universe. Just because Goku and Beerus didn't destroy the universe in one shot, it does not make them not universal as they threaten to destroy the entire macrocosm, which would include the likes of the afterlife which is as wide as the universe and a structure such as the Grand Kai planet which should logically be multiple galaxies in size due to, due to taking up a large space in the afterlife. You also have the Kaioshin realm which is so far away from heaven it's considered its own realm entirely as well. I bring all this up because if Beerus and Goku were only multi-galaxy level, then they wouldn't be capable of something of this caliber. For argument's sake, let's lowball Universe 7's macrocosm to twice, a bit, twice as big as the normal universe. You, with this, you can get Goku to multiversal levels of power through the standard definition of multiversal and through the Super Saiyan multipliers. These multipliers can each drastically increase Goku's power, speed, and durability for up to 50 times, 100 times, and 400 times, and even much higher. 400 times, of course, being Super Saiyan 3's multiplier, Goku would reach 800 times universal with this alone. Now, Super Saiyan God doesn't have a confirmed multiplier, but for the sake of lowballing, we will just equate Super Saiyan 3 to God. Uh, Super Saiyan Blue should be 50 times the power of Super Saiyan God, and then with the Kaioken, he can amplify that up to 20 times more on top of that. This would make Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku bare minimum 800,000 times universal, and this isn't even Goku's strongest form. In order to be classed as multiversal according to most versus sites, you have to be able to destroy the universe over 1,000 times over in one go, and this is a heavily lowballed Goku that can exceed this easily. Goku can reach the higher tiers of High Multiversal Plus if you take into account the Dragon Ball universe is sometimes stated to have realms that transcend each other, putting Goku way, way higher than that to an unquantifiable degree since that's a scale to his base state alone. Speed-wise, and Goku should scale to his own shockwaves he made with Beerus which spread around the universe within an instant and he was able to react to them. This places base Goku's reaction time between 587 quadrillion times faster than light to 11.74 sextillion times faster than light without all the multipliers added on top. He could also be granted infinite speed in base as he is able to react to the shockwaves as I said which was able to destroy and reach the end of the universe within an instant. The Dragon Ball universe is often stated to be infinite in size or never end ending. Now there are some ways you can get Goku higher than this in speed, but it's very finicky to say the least. Firstly, the first uh, just that comes to mind here is when he fought Jiren, whose power was stated to surpass time itself. Now it should be clear this is referring to Jiren's power rather than pure speed, as he used said power to break out of a time-based ability, rather than just using pure speed. Of course, this power does come from key, which he uses to amplify his own physical stats, which would include speed, so I'm not exactly going to say it's impossible to have Goku at a measurable speed, Speed, but it does require some mental gymnastics. Moving on to Mario, and just like Goku, I'll give variable high ends and low ends for power. For starters, he's bare minimum universal. This is due to him being able to damage Bowser with physical blows, who could withstand falling into a reactor which could tear apart the fabric of the universe. This could actually be a low multiversal feat if you go off of the interpretation that worlds of Mario have bottomless or never ending pits as stated in the handbooks, but this could very easily be exaggeration and not literally an infinitely sized pit. 
Mario can scale to the multiverse of ranges quite comfortably. This is due to him being able to harm Dreamy Bowser, who threatened to destroy the Dream Pot. This contains an infinite amount of dreams which are all universes in size. He can potentially scale to Paper Mario, and while they are separate characters, they are shown comparable to each other in terms of physical stats and crossover games. This is important since Paper Mario is capable of harming Super Dimensional, who could destroy all timelines, realities and possibilities within the Marioverse. This could even be complex multiversal if you include the Dream Pot within that as well, but that's the highest that Mario can feasibly reach. Speedwise, and Mario should have completely immeasurable reaction time. I should just him being able to pilot the star and react to things flying at him, literally flying through time and space. This is not even mentioning power ups, which could increase his speed even further. So of course, in terms of stats, the two are fairly even. Mario and Goku have scaling that can have them range into the multiverse levels of power, but with Goku getting further into that than Mario, unless you buy complex multiversal Mario. On the other hand though, Mario has some good immeasurable speed time arguments, while Goku's immeasurable speed arguments are a little bit shaky at best. But I'll go through each of the ways that you can scale them towards the end of the video. For now, we need to get to the bulk of the video. The power-ups, the abilities, the forms and techniques of Mario and Goku. I'm going to be giving Mario and Goku everything within their canonical states, with Goku having everything up until Dragon Ball Super, and then Dragon Ball Super, and Mario having all of the power-ups within his games. If you're a returning viewer, then you know that these two have a thesaurus worth of abilities, so bear with me because it's going to be just me reading from a massive list, but I ask you to bear with me here. Starting with Goku, the first thing you need to know about him is he is an incredible fighting genius, as he's been fighting top tier martial artists his whole life and can not only accurately predict their movements, even ones that go through time itself, but even can close small power gaps with just martial arts alone. He's an expert at analysing his opponent's fighting styles to the point where not only can he adapt to them, but he can replicate them himself upon just viewing them. His fighting styles also allow him to create after images, is quite acrobatic and can even allow himself to strike the pressure points of the body. During his training as martial arts as a kid, he also gained stealth mastery and limited perception manipulation as well, being able to dampen his presence completely. One of the most well known things about Goku is that he's a Saiyan, which grabs from abilities such as limited longevity, transformation, enhanced senses, adaptation, a high pain tolerance, limited regeneration and gets stronger as he fights and as he takes damage. The crux of Goku's main abilities are also related to his manipulation of Ki, which allows him to sense the locations of others, fire off energy blasts, can create small shields of energy, can strengthen his own attacks, use telekinesis, telepathy, can fly, can create and absorb other Ki attacks, can create shockwaves, can duplicate himself, can generate light and electricity. With God Key, he gains even more powers, such as not being able to be sensed by beings lower than gods, and being able to bind people in place, along with a higher regeneration factor. He can also generate heat and has limited instinctual reaction, even without Ultra Instinct. Key can also be used for, uh, by Goku to implant ma uh, landmines on the floor to explode later on. He can also negate godly regeneration and immortality, seeing that the spirit bomb can nullify future Zamasu's regeneration, or at least his physical body rather than his spiritual one. Goku has also got a technique called Instant Transmission, which can use to teleport to places with life energy within an instant. He also has the Destructo Disc, which can cut uh, people or just cut through things that are way stronger than Goku himself. He also has other abilities such as possessing supernatural willpower, limited fourth wall breaking and tune force, statistics amplification uh, via the Kaioken and the Super Saiyan forms which also grant some rage power. He also has social influencing, fusionism with the fusion dance, sound manipulation and reactive evolution, limited weather manipulation, purification, space time manipulation being able to break out of Hit's time cage, water walking, force field creation, healing, sealing with the Mafuba, summoning of Zeno with the Zeno button, likely non-physical interaction seeing that Key can damage ghosts and can also have a ripple effect to Zamasu's ethereal form, that Maku, limited air manipulation, limited power nullification, nullifying Jared's uh, Key Blast. With Ultra Instinct, he has an even greater level of heat generation, uh, along with a greater instinctive reaction and adaptation powers, uh, constantly growing stronger as able to constantly dodge people's attacks without even thinking. Goku has plenty of resistances too, such as the poisons, paralysis inducement, harsh and cold temperatures, radiation, extreme heat, disease manipulation, extrasensory perception, time stop, uh, electricity manipulation, void manipulation, existence erasure, soul destruction and unlimited spatial manipulation due to being able to survive the Hakai, he can also survive black holes and empathic manipulation. There are possibly even more abilities than this, but it depends on how you look at Goku himself since he's never actually performed these on his own, such as 
Gotenks being able to scream so loud that he created another portal to another dimension, or Vegito being able to resist transmutation, or Vegeta being able to resist time or uh, mind control. However, he far outscales those who have done it, so I, I figured I'd bring it up just in case but some of you would buy it. As for Mario, on the other hand, he's very cracked for abilities. Firstly, he's a genius in intellect, is very acrobatic, and has enhanced jumping skills. He's an expert in combat and can break the fourth wall and can easily drive any vehicle. He shows adaptation, being able to breathe underwater along with self-sustenance. He shows being able to manipulate and create fire even without the use of power-ups along with energy projection and limited force field creation. He has limited invulnerability with a triple jump, after image creation and attack reflection with spin jumps, super guard and the hammer. He has air manipulation, size manipulation, explosion manipulation, time travel, a causality, telekinesis, non physical interaction, and shares a telepathic link with Luigi. He can freely phase between two and three dimensions at once. He has self perception manipulation, he has BFR, spatial manipulation, hammer space, statistics effect inducement, tune force and elasticity, perception, and possible existence erasure, seemingly erasing Wendy's castle from existence. With powered ups, he also gains transformation, statistics and and healing. He can make himself a giant in size and also very, very small. Uh, he has further fire manipulation with the fire flower, rock manipulation with the rock mushroom, ice manipulation with the ice flower and the penguin suit, invulnerability through a number of power ups such as the Starman, Rainbow Star, Superstar, Mega Mushroom, Invincibility Leaf, Metal Cap, and the list goes on. He can teleport with the P Wing or Warp Whistle. He can fly with honestly more power ups than I can count. He has animal manipulation, vibration manipulation, attack reflection with the cape feather, weapon. Mastery with a hammer suit, the super ball flower, and boomerang flower. He has surface scaling, shape shifting, and power mimicry with the Luigi and Wario caps, creation with the super hammer, ice manipulation with a storm, sleep manipulation via sleepy sheep and lullaby, intangibility and invisibility with the vanish cap, metal manipulation with the metal cap, cloud manipulation with the cloud flower, transmutation with the gold flower and music keys, soul manipulation and sealing with the catch card, explosion manipulation can attack foes without directly even coming into contact with them with the boost star, has time manipulation being able to stop time with the stopwatch along with the speed and slow flower. He can possess people with Cappy, has purification with the Able Juice, has summoning with the Z Keeper, passive damage nullification with the Guard Shell DX or Battle Cards, electricity manipulation with the Volstrom, one hit knockout with the Showstopper, duplication with the Clone Jump, Double Cherry and Copy Flower. Mario even has probability manipulation with Close Call or Lucky Day, which can sometimes cause his enemies to miss their attacks. He has weather manipulation, mind control, empathy manipulation and reality warping with the Music Keys. He has portal creation with magic window, transmutation and BFR with up, up and away. Uh, he has statistics amplification, healing and statistics reduction with battle cards, sound generation, acid manipulation with the lemon thing, adhesive manipulation being able to tape characters to the fabric of reality, Broadway force, light manipulation with the flashlight, absorption being able to summon a large sponge to absorb attacks. Pocket reality manipulation, ceiling, healing, black hole creation with the power stars, existence erasure with, also with the power stars. And speaking of the power stars, it should also grant him the abilities such as fusionism, summoning, poison manipulation, statistics, effect inducement, wish granting, portal creation, dimensional travel, power nullification, and creation. As for resistances, Mario should have resistance to heat, extreme cold temperatures, and cosmic radiations, mind manipulation, gravity manipulation, paralysis inducement, sleep manipulation, corruption, transmutation, black hole. Holes, void manipulation, existence erasure, likely petrification and electricity manipulation. The super suit or fine feeling badge would also grant him resistance to elemental manipulation, fear manipulation, transmutation, poison manipulation, sleep manipulation, and death attacks, time manipulation, statistics amplification, statistics reduction, paralysis inducement, and power nullification. So after that mindfuck of a list, I wouldn't be surprised if y'all zoned out, but needless to say, Goku and Mario's abilities can be countered or ignored each other and to some capacity. Honestly, it'd be faster to simply list the abilities that neither have an answer for to begin with. Starting with Goku, he doesn't have answers for Mario reflecting his attacks back onto him, his invulnerability, time travel, a causality, sleep manipulation, being able to attack people without direct contact, statistics reduction, passive damage nullification, probability manipulation, reality warping, adhesive manipulation and absorption. Similarly, Mario has no answer for Goku's martial arts expertise, being able to replicate Mario's fighting style, getting stronger as the fight goes on and regeneration. I know it doesn't sound like a lot for Goku, but believe me when I say he has a metric bucket load of resistances for Mario's abilities. 
There's also the uh, stuff that can also fall under the bracket of weaker characters in Dragon Ball have done it, but Goku hasn't. So you could argue that Goku is uh, susceptible to being sealed away in another dimension, is not susceptible to being possessed by Cappy or being transmutated. Um, there's also nowhere to bring up that there's an argument to say that he could be fine throughout all of that. Uh, there's also a potential argument that Goku could resist Wario, uh, Mario's wish granting, seeing that he was able to ignore Shenron using his wish granting powers to send Goku from uh, Yardrat to Earth. Now, I know the Eternal Dragon can't do things out with its own power, so you could chalk it up to that, but even then, Piccolo was able to be transformed or trans. Or uh, transition from the afterlife to Namek, which is a whole other dimension away, much less Goku across space, so it still can be argued. So who wins? Well, if you go off stats, firstly, if you buy complex multiversal Mario, then Goku isn't really going to be able to hurt Mario at all, and Mario is just going to get up easily win. Of course, this is his highball, however. Going off low balls, then Goku would be much stronger than Mario, with Mario's mid-range only being on par with Goku. Of course, Goku is also going to get stronger through transformations and the fact he's the same, so Mario's going to have a really hard time with that, not to mention that Goku is better in hand-to-hand -hand combat than Mario. Sure, Mario can reduce Goku's power, but it's only a temporary solution as Goku's power is ever-growing. However, speed is an issue here. If you don't buy a measurable speed for Goku, then Mario's just going to blitz Goku and there's nothing you can do about it and thus he would win. If you go off just using argument's sake and just say that they're equal in stats, then it becomes a lot more interesting. Now, Goku does have a lot of things he's better than Mario at, such as hand-to-hand -hand combat and regeneration, have more control over flight, but by comparison, Mario has better things such as duplication and sealing, as while Goku can seal people away, he needs a seal to do so, which is something he doesn't typically have on hand. Despite Goku countering a lot of Mario's arsenal, his win conditions are fairly simple with the equal stats, uh, as he'll get stronger throughout the fight and would outbox Mario pretty easily and heal from any wounds taken across the fight. However, Mario has a lot of potential win conditions on his own too. While Goku can have a beat in the physical department, he has many one-shot abilities that Goku just has not been able to show being able to handle. Firstly, there's nothing stopping Mario from just putting Goku to sleep, warping reality, or taping him to reality itself. Even if you don't think Mario could seal Goku away, possess him, or turn him to gold, he still has these easy win cons around that. Ultra Instinct isn't even a factor here due to the boost star mode as well, which can hit Goku no matter what. So, rather than, so more than not, I think Goku's win conditions evolve a little bit more of a longer fight, while Mario just has to use specific power-ups, and he will have them due to his hammer space. I should also probably bring up the argument of Dragon Ball characters being able to resist hacks as long as they're stronger than their opponent, and while that is true for the most part, there are some instances of it not being the case. For example, Frost could redirect Master Roshi's Mafuba to seal Vegeta away, and a base off-guard Goku could survive an Akai from Sidra. So it depends on the abilities and if they've shown resistance to them, rather than just saying they'd be able to resist all abilities no matter what, so long as they're stronger. Not to mention that Goku is only stronger than Mario if you buy certain low ends and high ends for both. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, subscribe, comment below your thoughts on the debate, and I'll see you next time.